It was 1.13 on a Tuesday when Toby realized his fingers had begun to stink. At first he thought it was his ham and cheese sandwich, which sat soggily on his desk. He brought it up to his nose for a sniff, but quickly realized the smell was coming from under his fingernails. He sniffed so closely that he gagged, dropping the sandwich on his keyboard. His busybody co-worker, Kathleen, immediately popped over the cubicle when she heard the sandwich hit the keys. Everything okay, Toby? Uh, yes, Toby responded quietly. She eyed him suspiciously. When she sat back down, he brought his fingers to his nose for another sniff. They stunk. Toby tried to ignore the stink, but as the day went on, his fingers began to smell more and more. For fear of being caught in the office elevator with critical co-workers, he waited until everyone left before he sat up and headed to the bathroom. In the bathroom, he noticed pus was collecting beneath his fingernails. Painful pressure was building on the tips of his fingers, so excruciating that his vision tunneled. He held his hands to his face and screamed. Immediately, the custodian from Slovenia peeked his head into the bathroom. Mr. Toby, you are not okay. I'm fine. Say, Drago, could you hand me the pliers from your belt? You are to use them to pull off fingernails? Drago inquired. I am. How did you know? Toby asked. The fingernails are stink, Drago responded deliberately. He handed the pliers to Toby, who pulled them off one by one. Each ripped fingernail hurt more than the last. Drago observed the scene with an animal-like curiosity. When all the fingernails had been taken off, Toby fainted on the floor in agony. Drago knelt down, took his pliers from Toby's hand, kissed Toby gently on the forehead, and left. The next day, Toby sat at his computer typing with bloody fingers. Had to take off your fingernails, huh? Asked Kathleen, popping over the padded cubicle. Yep. Kathleen sunk over the cubicle wall, concerned. Unfortunately, Toby couldn't bandage his fingers. Tiny eggs had begun growing in the nail beds, and he felt concerned. He searched the internet for possible causes or solutions, but found nothing. After 20 minutes of searching, he turned on his screensaver and went into a meeting. Toby nodded in and out of sleep as his supervisor talked about transparency and accountability. His boss was mid-presentation when Toby's fingernails began to itch. He attempted to ignore it, but try as he might, it was too intense. Toby shuffled in his seat in itchy agony, finally deciding he had to interrupt the presentation. <sighs> Jerry... Is it okay if I excuse myself? He asked meekly. Is this about the eggs? On your fingernails? Jerry asked. Just let them hatch. Then they'll stop itching. Jerry continued his presentation. The employees in the conference room continued to pay attention with great care. Toby resigned himself to the fact he'd need to let the eggs hatch. And so he did. Within moments of this resignation, locusts began sprouting from the eggs. They crawled up his arms and fanned their wings dry. Once satisfied with the dryness, they hopped in unpredictable directions. They crawled up the walls and landed in people's hair. <laughs> no one seemed to care, and Toby did receive a few thoughtful smirks. By the end of the day, Toby had plastic shopping bags taped around his hands. Locusts buzzed in the bags and bit him, begging for freedom. Whenever the bags filled completely with bugs, Toby would go to the restroom, where Drago would cut the bags open over an unclean toilet and flush the locusts that landed in the water. The next day was a disaster for Toby. Mercifully, all the eggs had hatched and no more grew. His fingers still stunk, but there were no bugs. Unfortunately, his hearing had become clogged and muffled. Kathleen's mouth moved in front of him, over the cubicle. She had a suspicious look on her face, and Toby continually interrupted her with, What? What did you say? Kathleen angrily ducked down behind her cubicle. She shot up a moment later with a handful of Q-tips and a note. On the note, her handwriting instructed, Stay still. She leaned over the cubicle wall, her pendulous tit swinging, and stabbed Toby in the ear. Immediately, honey began flowing out of his ears. It dripped onto his shoulders and soaked his shirt. The flow would not stop. Is that better? Kathleen barked. 
Yes. Thanks, responded Toby. She ducked back down to her desk and continued to work as Toby's shirt soaked through. The following day, Toby wore a garbage bag over his shirt like a cape as honey dripped to the floor. <laughs> Rough morning, asked Jerry, hovering over Toby's desk. Oh, my stomach hurts something awful, Toby responded. Well, let's have a listen, Jerry screamed. He bent down and put his ear against Toby's belly, listening carefully and nodding to himself. That might be more than a stomach ache. <sighs> Please see Drago in the bathroom, Jerry commanded. No stomach ache. It is baby. Toby's worst fears were realized. He went back to his desk, defeated. Over the course of the day, Toby's pregnancy accelerated. He squirmed in his seat, letting out loud gas, angering an already irate Kathleen. By five o'clock, he had come to full term. He called for Drago, and Drago appeared with scissors. Drago deliberately unbuckled Toby's belt, pulled down his pants and underwear, gruffly spread Toby's legs, and made an incision on his taint. The instant the cut went through, a baby flowed out, encased in honey and locusts. Several co-workers clapped, but most were bored at their desks. It is boy, Drago chimed enthusiastically. Oh, brother, wheezed Toby. Toby brought the boy into work for weeks as honey flowed from his ears. Locust eggs returned, and they hatched every 17 days exactly. The boy grew one year approximately every 23 days, to the point where he no longer fit on Toby's lap. Finally, Jerry needed to fire Toby. Look, Tobster, we love you, but we can't have all these bugs and honey and a baby working in quality assurance. <sighs> I'll need your ID card and your gun. Toby rose sadly, although he knew this was inevitable. He put down his ID card and his gun and led his son out of the office by his hand sadly as locusts leapt from the eggs. Three years passed. Toby gained weight from living off a diet of honey and locusts. His son had stopped growing at exactly the age of 17 and it was time for him to go to college. Toby and his son had developed a rocky relationship and neither trusted one another. His son hated his father for being such a bad head of household. They were going poor and had downsized into a single-room shack next to a massive shopping mall. Toby was well aware of his failure. So one night, as his son slept, Toby snuck outside and found a rope he had hid in a tiny patch of grass behind the decaying house. He was defeated and depressed, and hoped that whatever life insurance policy he had would care for his son. He slunk to the mall, dripping honey and popping with locusts. He arrived in front of a cheesecake factory. It had a sign that hung 12 feet above his head. He climbed up the factory's large windows, swung the rope over the sign, tied the rope around his neck, and jumped from the window. He hadn't fallen far enough to break his neck, so he swayed as he suffocated. He was ashamed about his failure as a father and his rampant poverty as his neck crooked at a weird angle. It fell at such an angle that honey dripped from his ear into his mouth. Eureka. It was at that moment, although far too late, that Toby realized he could package and sell the honey at a tremendous profit with relatively low overhead. His vision faded as he schemed, even inventing a logo he would put on the jars. And right as his vision went to a pinprick, the rope snapped under his tremendous honey-fed weight and he crashed to the ground. He fell and broke his ankles, but was otherwise fine. And once he caught his breath, he crawled home in agonizing pain. Within six months, Toby was a billionaire. His son had forgiven him and went to college on a full soccer scholarship. He became a prized soccer player and traveled the world playing in championships and teaching underprivileged children. Toby grew fat and happy as his bank account grew. As he watched TV one night, he learned that Kathleen had shot herself in the head in the middle of a crowded movie theater. The moral of the story is, <laughs> sometimes things work out. This story